In the shadows of a secret brotherhood, the Invisible College, they whispered of a new world, a world where truth was not inherited, but tested. He was the man who proved that air itself is the silent lifeblood of existence, that without it, flames collapse and living creatures fall still. He shattered the ancient illusions of alchemy, dismantling a thousand years of mystic doctrine with a single weapon, evidence. And when the Royal Society rose, it did so upon the very foundation he laid, a new kind of science, open, testable, and unyielding in its pursuit of truth. This is the story of Robert Boyle, the man who turned curiosity into a revolution. On January 25th, 1627, in the fortified stone walls of Lismore Castle, a child was born into one of the most powerful families in Ireland. His name was Robert Boyle, the 14th child of Richard Boyle, the first Earl of Cork, one of the wealthiest and most influential figures in the British Isles. From the moment he opened his eyes, Boyle lived in a world shaped by privilege, vast estates, political power, and resources that few in the 17th century could even imagine. But this story isn't about luxury. It's about what Boyle did with access. Access to tutors who taught him Latin, Greek, mathematics, and natural philosophy. Access to books, instruments, and ideas that would later reshape the scientific world. As Boyle grew, so did his hunger for knowledge. And at just 11 years old, he embarked on a transformative voyage the grand tour of Europe. Through France, across Switzerland, and into the heart of Italy, the young Boyle encountered a universe of new ideas. In Florence, he encountered the legacy of Galileo, mathematics applied to nature, experiments that challenged ancient authority, and instruments that measured the world with unprecedented precision. Here, the spark ignited. The spark that would burn through centuries of Aristotelian doctrine and help give birth to the scientific method. Even as a child, Boyle was different. While others played, he wrote. He kept journals filled with reflections, moral questions, and observations about the natural world. He learned languages with ease, Latin, Greek, French, opening doors to the scientific and philosophical works of Europe. And in those early notes, Historians later found something remarkable, the seeds of a new way of thinking about matter. Tiny particles, moving, combining, separating, ideas that would blossom into Boyle's corpuscular philosophy. When Boyle returned to England, everything he had seen abroad collided with a growing intellectual movement at home. He entered circles of thinkers who believed that knowledge shouldn't come from authority, but from experiment. This was the Hartlib Network, the Invisible College, a quiet, radical fraternity of natural philosophers determined to test nature instead of merely theorizing about it. Boyle didn't just absorb their ideas, he embraced them with a fervor that surprised even his closest colleagues. Because in the 1640s, choosing experiment over tradition wasn't just innovative, it was revolutionary. They called themselves an invisible college, a secretive network of thinkers bound together not by institution, but by a shared defiance of tradition. Their radical creed? Experiment first, authority second. In a world still dominated by ancient doctrines, these men exchanged letters, manuscripts, and observations in quiet rooms and private gatherings. They believed truth was not inherited, it was discovered. And Robert Boyle, with his restless mind and relentless curiosity, quickly emerged as one of their brightest lights. Before long, Boyle moved to Oxford, a city buzzing with intellectual energy. Here, the boundaries of knowledge were being torn apart and rebuilt. Architect Christopher Wren explored geometry and astronomy. Thomas Willis probed the mysteries of the human brain. 
Seth Ward mapped the heavens, and John Wilkins, a visionary organiser of scientific thought, helped unite them all. Within this vibrant community, Boyle found not just peers, but a purpose. Oxford became the crucible of a scientific revolution, and Boyle, its quiet, meticulous architect. But every architect needs a builder. Enter Robert Hooke. A brilliant young experimenter with extraordinary mechanical genius, Hooke could turn ideas into instruments, sketches into machines, and curiosity into precision. Boyle brought the philosophical clarity. Hooke brought the technical firepower. Together they formed one of the most formidable partnerships in the history of science. Boyle envisioned what needed to be tested. Hooke engineered how it could be tested. And between them, the engine of discovery roared to life. Their greatest creation began as an audacious ambition to remove air itself, to create nothing. Piece by piece, Hook and Boyle built a device unlike anything England had seen. Valves that clicked into place, glass chambers sealed with careful precision, mercury rising in slender tubes, pistons that groaned against the invisible pressure of the atmosphere. At last, the machine breathed, and then it unbreathed. This air pump didn't just alter pressure, it brought into existence the first experimental vacuums in Britain. A technological triumph that defied ancient philosophical claims that a vacuum was impossible. Now, Boyle could explore a realm that nature itself seemed to forbid. What followed was a cascade of experiments that would change scientific history. A flame placed under a jar dwindled, then died. A small animal struggled as the air thinned, proving that life itself depended on this mysterious substance. A ringing bell fell silent in the void, revealing that sound cannot travel without a medium. With every test, Boyle recorded numbers, repeated trials, refined methods. Patterns emerged, relationships, laws. From these meticulous investigations, something extraordinary crystallized. The realization that pressure and volume were connected in a precise mathematical dance. In this chamber, Boyle uncovered one of the universe's hidden relationships, a principle still taught in every physics and chemistry classroom today. Before Boyle, chemistry was a tangled world, part alchemy, part medicine, part mysticism. It spoke in symbols and secrets, veiled recipes and hidden doctrines. Practitioners guarded their methods cloaking their work in allegory. Fire, water, earth and air. These were said to be the building blocks of everything. But the experiments were inconsistent, the explanations vague, the claims impossible to test. Into this labyrinth of tradition stepped Robert Boyle, armed not with superstition, but with curiosity, clarity and a fierce commitment to evidence. In 1661, Boyle released a book that detonated through the world of natural philosophy like a philosophical explosion, the Skeptical Chymist. Page by page, he dismantled centuries of accepted wisdom. The Aristotelian four elements? He showed they failed every empirical test. The Paracelsian Triaprima, salt, sulfur and mercury? He exposed their contradictions and ambiguities. Boyle didn't just reject old theories, he replaced them with something far more powerful, a new definition of a chemical element, a substance that cannot be broken down into simpler parts by chemical means. It was a definition so clear, so practical, that modern chemistry still rests upon it. And behind that clarity was a radical new vision of matter itself. Boyle proposed that the universe was built from tiny particles, corpuscles, each with shape, size, and motion. No mystical essences, no hidden principles, just matter behaving according to the arrangement and interaction of its parts. Matter wasn't made of philosophical categories, it was made of particles. And the behavior of those particles explained everything from the elasticity of air to the color of a mineral. It was a vision with one foot in the mechanical world of Galileo, and one foot in the emerging future of atomic science. 
But Boyle's revolution didn't stop at ideas. It extended to method. He championed controlled experiments where variables were isolated with precision. He demanded reproducibility, insisting that no result was valid unless it could be achieved again and again. He believed in transparent reporting, describing every apparatus, every step, every measurement. He introduced quantification, replacing vague description with numerical data. And he used instruments, air pumps, barometers, thermometers, as extensions of the human senses, turning observation into something objective. Boyle wasn't simply doing experiments. He was defining what an experiment is. His approach laid the foundation for the entire scientific method. And as the Royal Society took shape, it embraced Boyle's ideals as its guiding principles. Open discussion, shared results, collective skepticism, and a relentless pursuit of empirical truth. The society became the institutional embodiment of Boyle's scientific vision. A community where knowledge was public, experiments were repeatable, and claims were tested, not simply believed. Through its journals, letters and demonstrations, Boyle's methodology spread across Europe, reshaping how natural philosophers, from London to Paris to Leiden, approached the study of nature. In redefining chemistry, Boyle helped redefine science itself. For Boyle, studying nature was a form of worship. He believed that every law, every particle, every hidden mechanism was part of a divine architecture, a world crafted with intention, precision, and purpose. In The Christian Virtuoso, Boyle argued that a true natural philosopher must also be a person of deep moral integrity, honesty in observation, humility in discovery, transparency in method, to distort data, to claim certainty where there was none. This, to Boyle, was not just bad science, it was a moral failure. For him, the pursuit of truth, scientific and spiritual, were threads of the same tapestry. Boyle's faith was not confined to the laboratory. He used his wealth to support one of the most ambitious religious projects of his age, the translation and global distribution of the Bible. He funded printing presses, backed missionary writings, supported translations into Irish, Turkish and other languages so that people across cultures could read scripture in their own tongue. Boyle saw knowledge, whether scientific or spiritual, as something that must be shared freely. Secrecy belonged to the alchemists. Openness belonged to the future. But even as Boyle's intellectual power remained unbroken, his body began to fail. Years of chemical fumes, sleepless nights, and the physical demands of laboratory work took their toll. In his final decades, frail and often ill, Boyle retreated from experimental labor, but not from thought. He wrote tirelessly, scientific treatises, philosophical reflections, theological defenses. He refined his ideas on matter, on the limits of knowledge, on the moral obligations of those who search for truth. Bent over his desk, wrapped in blankets against the cold, Boyle continued to shape the future of science one page at a time. In December of 1691, tragedy struck. Boyle's beloved sister, Catherine, his lifelong confidant, intellectual partner and anchor, died after a brief illness. They had lived together for years, inseparable companions in learning and conversation. One week later, on December 31st, Robert Boyle followed her. It was as though the two minds had been bound too closely to be parted for long. Across England and Europe, scholars mourned him. The Royal Society honoured him not merely as a member, but as one of the architects of its very purpose. Boyle's death marked the end of an era, but the beginning of a legacy. Today, Boyle's fingerprints lie everywhere in modern science. Boyle's law, expanded into the ideal gas law, governs engines, airbags, respirators and rockets. His insistence on transparency, repeatability and controlled experimentation became the backbone of the scientific method. 
His demolition of alchemical dogma paved the road to modern chemistry. Newton built on the experimental culture Boyle helped create. Locke absorbed Boyle's empiricism into the philosophy that would shape the Enlightenment. Lavoisier refined chemistry using definitions first proposed by Boyle. Few individuals in history have so profoundly shaped the world's understanding of nature. Boyle didn't just reveal the hidden laws of air, matter and motion. He showed the world how to discover truth. Every experiment, every lab notebook, every scientific breakthrough today carries echoes of Robert Boyle. From the hiss of a modern vacuum chamber to the engines that lift rockets into space to the equations scribbled in classrooms across the globe, his legacy endures. A quiet aristocrat from 17th century Ireland who helped invent the modern scientific world.